hello there my sexy beasties welcome back to my channel my name is Gigi and last night I watched you should have left and I'm going to give you my short mini review and then we'll talk about it do not pay $20 for this movie if you were considering renting this movie this weekend rent something else or just watch something that's already on your prime or your other streaming services do not pay $20 for this movie. <sighs> they Should Have Left is a 2020 movie, and it stars Kevin Bacon, who I usually really love. I find him to be an awesome actor, and he engages me in most of his roles. This would not be one of them. The director of this movie and the screenplay writer is David Cope, K-O-E-P-P. -P. Um... He is also the writer of Jurassic Park. And based on the, the writing of this movie, you would never know that. I want to start off by saying I was only jump scared twice in this entire movie. Absolutely everything else that's interesting about this movie is already in the trailer. You literally do not have to watch anything else. Um, the story is very thin. It is not well written. There is no character development. There is no build up. There's just flat, uninteresting drama with an occasional shadow passing by or door slamming and then a revelation. A revelation that is not needed because it is given away much earlier in the movie. You know, <sighs> there felt almost like an air, almost, I want to say almost like an air of mystery about the movie until something's revealed to the daughter. Once that is revealed, you know what is what is happening, what is going to happen, and the movie delivers on everything you think is going to happen. It is very predictable and has absolutely no story whatsoever. You could have said some things happen to some people and that would have been just as good as watching this movie. Um, Amanda Seyfried, 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 is in this as well as Jeff Bell as my favorite character in the movie, frankly. He's the, the shopkeeper, exasperatingly awesome. I loved him in this movie. Um, and I, I don't see the little girl's name here. She was, she was pretty good. The little girl was pretty good. So the family is, I I don't know whether to go deep into this as an explanation or not, guys, because I don't know. Spoiler alert from here on out, I guess. Um, the movie centers around a family, Kevin Bacon, Amanda Seyfried, and their daughter. Uh, she's an actress, which is literally the only thing you know about her. That's literally it. She's an actress married to Kevin Bacon. That, that is all the development you get about her until the very end of the movie when you find out she's fucking some other dude. Which is the only reason why, which is only used as a plot device to get her to leave the house. Their daughter is adorable and has... I think from the dream that she has, you are supposed to to think that she's got some sensitivity or something. That's sort of the vibe I got. Um, but once they decide to go away together as a family on a little vacation before the next movie starts shooting, um, they, they go find this house. And they go to this house, it's in Wales, and they fall in love with it. It's so, it, the house is out of place, ultra modern, and not fitting the countryside there at all. It's almost weird that it's there. But it's a beautiful house. Um, and over time, as, as, you're, as you're in the home, it starts to change. 
you'll open a door and something will be there that wasn't there before. You'll turn to a wall and a door's there that wasn't there before. Doors open, doors slam, there's shadows. Typical haunted house kind of stuff, but that's not what's going on. Part of the way, uh, I actually like the, the second day that they're there, I wanna say, the little girl asks her mother, Amanda Seyfried, um, which is Su Susanna, that, um, you know, why do people hate daddy? And she just comes out and tells her. I mean, they, they had apparently been hiding it from her, but she comes out and says, people think that daddy killed his first wife. And right there you know. The house is his hell because he killed his first wife. And from there, the things that happen don't really make that much sense. Like there's this part in the movie where, and you see it coming from a mile away, where he and the little girl try to leave. After him and the, the wifey have had their fight and she leaves, him and the little girl get freaked out and they try to leave. But it is England, okay? It's cold at night, okay? But it's cold at night in the middle of summer there. So they're walking and walking and walking and walking and walking and they're snarling in animals that you never see and nothing ever comes of that. So it was like a stupid device just to make them feel scared, I guess, or to make you feel scared, which it doesn't. And then of course they walk back up to the house. You saw it coming a mile away. And once they go back in the house, shit starts happening and he has to confront himself and admit what he has done so his daughter can leave the house because the house isn't going to let the daughter go unless he stays and admits that he's guilty so he ends up telling the wife yeah i did it i killed that bitch and um although i'm paraphrasing of course that's not what he said and he says you and my daughter have to leave and then he walks back in the house but there's this one little device that comes out of nowhere is never explained and doesn't make sense there is a part in the movie where you see him running around, looking around the house, and he runs into a room only to see himself sitting at the desk writing in the journal. And then he goes and writes in the journal, you should leave, or you should, yeah, you should leave, go now, which you see in, in the trailer. And that's the message that he gets mad about who's writing in my journal. There was, there was no lead up to that. There was no explanation of that. That did not continue to happen. Um, and that happened also when, oh, except for that one time when they leave on the walk, he's standing in the window watching himself go on the walk with his daughter to leave. Whew, the movie's bad, you guys. It is so bad. Um, at first I felt like maybe it was just meh. But honestly, honestly, it's shit. And it really is bumming me out because it's a Blumhouse movie and I have really come to rely on Blumhouse to give me quality entertainment, to, to scare me, to make me think, to make me consider characters. And this, what is this? It's, if you're just gonna come become another production house that shits out crap every fucking, month i'm gonna be done with you i really hunger for quality horror and i know other horror fans feel the same way sorry about that that was my foot um so i'm imploring you blumhouse please step yourself back up stop relaxing because this shit is not acceptable okay guys on um our Let's rate this, okay? This is not a shitty horror movie. That that will be a tomorrow thing. So let's go a 1 to 10 score on this. I'm going to give it a 2. Um, it is really bad, you guys. Like, one of the worst things I've ever seen Kevin Bacon in. Just literally the worst. And I feel really depressed that this is the shit that he's doing. I would rather you not act at all than you fucking do this shit for a payday. It's gross. Okay, guys, um, let me know what you thought about the movie if you watch it. If you've already seen it, do you agree with me? Are you going to watch the movie now, despite the fact that I told you not to? Let me know. Uh, tomorrow, shitty horror movie review. And I am actually still doing a lot of 
reading articles and looking into historical things and listening to black voices. I have things to say and I will say them, but I want to be really thoughtful and I don't want to do just one video. So I'm making notes and jotting things down and just trying to be the most thoughtful human and American that I can at this moment. So look forward to that as well. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to click all my buttons on your way out and we will see you tomorrow. Mwah. Bye.